It sounds good right now after what we just experienced, doesn't it? Grilling out, lawns being mowed, and pools opening. These are some of the things we expect with summer. <laughs> Guys, we're back with Lucas and from Arctic and we've been talking about some of the different things that they manufacture in their company and today we're gonna be looking at snow plows. It's the snow plows that you would put on a skid loader. They're not all designed equal. And today we're gonna be learning the differences between snow plows for loaders, skid loaders, so that when you guys are in the market for that, you can look it up and know what to look for. Good morning you guys. What a beautiful day. We actually have a slight break in the weather. We've had 21 inches of snow over the last 10 days and we've got another six or seven inches coming. Not tomorrow, but the next day, which gives me just enough time to pump out a few of these videos for you guys. And today we're going to be talking about the differences and comparing and contrasting snow plows, which is something you typically are seeing on the front of a pickup truck like this and a snow pusher. Let's talk about what we're getting into today and then get into some of the fundamental differences and help you guys decide which one is right for you. Today we're gonna to be meeting with Lucas. That name right there, Arctic. Lucas brought me a baby plow. Look, it's so cute. Oh. His company actually builds both snow plows and snow pushers. We're gonna show each in action and we're going to talk about them on a side-by-side -side basis. And hopefully by the time we're done with this, guys, when you're out looking for your own piece of equipment, you'll know which one is right for you, whether it's a snow plow or a snow pusher. So without wasting any more time, let's start moving some snow. in the sled. That's a good amount of snow there. Dude, dude. Come on, sledge. Sledge, sledge, sledge. Oh, look at it. Oh, oh, little wheel sped. Nobody's down there. All right, you guys, let's talk about one of the fundamental differences between a snow plow and a snow pusher. A snow plow will typically be power angled, meaning that you have the ability to angle from one side to the next side and smooth the snow away from one location across the lot to another location. With a snow plow, you're simply moving it over to the side. And the benefit comes in when you can continue to move it over and move it over and move it over until you get it to where it's finally got to go, which hopefully it doesn't go over at my house. We've never gotten the snow this clean before with our other ones. Alright, let's talk about the main differences that Arctic makes and does with their snow plows. What do you do to differentiate yourself in the market? So, right off the bat, we'll start with where we connect with the machine. This is a pivoting hitch. This allows the A-frame and the frame of the plow to pivot independently from the machine. It frees everything up. There's no binding as it crosses uneven ground. Then we have a swivel plate that attaches the A-frame to the frame, and that allows the plow frame to move in a plane as such as it again comes into contact with uneven ground and then we employ our sectional mold board trip edge design holy crap how many moving parts can you get on a snowplow plus it power moves right yeah oh yeah the power waves yeah. more moving parts the better <laughs> what we like to say. well at least one of us likes to say that i'm the opposite i think uh let's take a look at the front of this snowplow there's something missing lucas and i want to find out where's your wings on this do you have wings for these? Not yet. That is actually something we're coming out with, which wow. I'm really excited for. When do those come out? Um, right now we're testing a few of them, and we'll probably have one on the market next fall. Okay, that's a 
that's going to be definitely a game changer because the yep. ability to to uh, wing side to side plus capture snow while you're winging yep. is brings the best of both worlds brings the best of the the box world yep. with the best of the plow world yep right oh yep and so and then yours you have is that actually considered is that a live edge is that what that's considered or is that a trademark or no, this is a true sectional design, is what it is, and, and it promotes more movement, which is better for adaptability for the plow to different surfaces okay. and overcoming different obstacles. So your plow, your snow plow, has the same pucks that your sectional pushers have. How many sectional pushers have you sold over the years, just like roughly? We're over 12,000. So you've sold over 12,000. How many have... Uh, like what's your complaint ratio like how many have been broken or still in operation or um i know for a fact that all of them are still in operation the, the ones that we originally designed for our own use back in the early 90s are still in use today that makes those plows over 25 years old um but in terms of complaint for the poly block issue uh, within the past three years, we saw almost a complete drop in, in a complaint. Oh, just, because you changed up the poly yeah, changing blocks. up the design, changing up the formula, and um, just sourcing better manufacturers for supplying us with the blocks. Okay, so if we look at these blocks, and we're going to look at them, their poly block design has changed. Now you've got a thicker block on the bottom and a thinner block on the top. Why not just have two thicker blocks? Because it makes the plow too rigid and you lose that uh, adaptability for contouring to the surfaces of uneven pavement. Okay, so that con the ability to contour really is what gives you that squeegeeing effect. Yeah, I right? mean, if you look at this parking lot, we're barely looking at a dusting. If I was in a situation where salt is as expensive as it is today and I was really on dire straits to get more of it, I would tell my guys to go out with these plows and scrape this up and then salt and use, use half the salt. And it will, it would scrape this down just like my shoe right there. So that, those snow plows will, will yep. squeegee right to the lot. Yeah. So a lot of the uh, early technology that you developed in the 90s with the sectional pushers, yep. you just adapted for the snow plow application. Yep, we just went back to where we started and we just took the wings off, put them on an A-frame and changed how the frame thick uh, wideness is. So when you power angle all the way, you clear the frame on say a building if you were scraping near the back of a building. And so yeah, I mean, we really just kind of returned to our roots and used what success we had with the pusher, design changes over the years to um, to re-implement that into a new plot. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it, is really what you're saying, <laughs> Yep. right? Yep. I mean, that's what it boils down to. So we're gonna be testing out the snow plow. We're also gonna be testing out these sectional pushers. And, and the uh, Raptor. So the Raptor is going to town. The Raptor Plus. Yep. Okay. So we got a lot of testing to do, and thankfully we've got a whole week's worth. was saying some pretty bold words earlier. Oh. <laughs> well, I, you was, say it again. I was claiming that me and that sledge with the 15 and a half foot light duty can outplow those two machines, that bobcat with that pusher and that one. That's a 
guarantee that's not a statement. So one loader can out plow six pickup trucks, and it's, it's not an exaggeration. We do it all the time. When we're plowing our competitions using other other plows, and we're just sitting there, and they're coming over to us like, what is this thing? And that's how that's how it started, that we started selling to people. Why are they so efficient? Just because of how, how the plow is designed to allow the machine to run independently in contour to the pavement, right up and down uneven surfaces. The machine's four tires are on the ground with perfect traction from the weight of the machine and then all that machine is doing is just pushing forward and all the resistance is is the weight of the plow and the snow in front of it and I, I, we have videos that just mountains of snow in front of a track machine and that track machine just keeps going like, like so one nothing. of the things that I want to point out is you didn't say that push it. oh but this one will still do it oh so, yeah but the point is is because there's a difference between that pusher and this pusher it's a big yeah. difference yeah this is more like the old school pushers right. this is kind this of definitely a, has better benefits if you were to compare a traditional fist pusher and ours again it has a slip pitch it'll run faster it has the shoes are somewhat adjustable yeah. so you can get the cutting edge on the ground and then you also have that protection of a trip edge that a rubber edge or a fixed plow doesn't have so like like we kind of alluded to earlier it's definitely a, a scenario of top shelf do you have the need for it? That's why we made the difference. Some of my customers don't need to have top shelf. They need to have something that's better than what was out there, and that's why we introduced the Raptor Plus line. And that allows them to get in at a price point that makes sense for their business. And then two, if they're looking for growth in the future, that plow is their future. And I, I like to say this plow is a great way for companies to grow because you can have a different machine every year, and you can always, um, upgrade in the future to bigger ones if that if that suits your needs. Tim, wait till you see the sledge with the 15 and a half foot on. He doesn't want to quit. God, that is just phenomenal. I'm sorry, I'm so excited. That Lucas brought me a baby plow. Look, it's so cute. Oh, yeah. It's like a plow, only smaller. <laughs> <laughs> Still does just as good of a job. That's what I love, though. <laughs> now, one of the clear advantages that a snow pusher has is its ability to move a mass quantity of snow pretty fast. If you have a good machine that's got power and you got a good pusher like the ones you're seeing today, these things can move a lot of snow really fast. And so there's where you, when you've got that right combination, then a snow pusher may be the right thing for you guys. All right, so what size is this one, Lucas? So this is our most popular. It's our 10 LD. And then right next to it, we have our 13 LD, which is our second. Then the 15 LD. So tell me, this 10 LD will go on just about every every mid-frame size skid loader, yeah, right? So anything at about 65 horsepower or up, okay. it'll go on. Okay, and then the the 13 LD, what is that? Need about 74 horsepower. It really depends on what kind of work you're doing and how long you got, how far away you got to take the snow. I mean, I'm just going to tell you right now, as an equipment operator, every piece of equipment I buy is. There, 74. <laughs> that everything I buy is 74 because it's a mid-frame size machine, yep. but you're optimizing your power output. Yep. And it, hey, if you don't buy 74, that's all right. Just don't buy 76 horsepower. Do you know why, Lucas? Why? Do you know why we don't buy 76 horsepower? Death. <laughs> oh, yeah, precisely. Death. Yep, yep death, death fluid is, uh, it's an obstacle to overcome. Yeah. It's just another another thing that can go wrong. Yeah. what it is. On yeah, so if you're looking at an 80 horsepower skid loader, just forget it. Just go get a 74 horsepower. Yep. That six horsepower difference isn't worth the hassle. Like right now, yep. death fluid is, fro is froze. Yep. It's froze solid. Yep. Like right now, like if your machine is parked, like our machines were parked for what, two weeks, Frankie? Yeah. That deaf fruit, and we'd have to preheat it, thaw it out. I mean, it's oh, yeah. more froze than my one thumb that's been holding this camera. Or okay. my hands. <laughs> <laughs> Did you not wear gloves in Chicago? No, I had some. I just, you know, we were on the spot. And I didn't want to look silly. You so. didn't? What? what? Yeah. Oh! Me looks silly. Ego! Yeah. His ego's writing checks that his hands wish that they didn't have to cash, right? 
Now we've talked about this in other videos, but it's, I think it's important enough to repeat. When you are using either a snow plow or a snow pusher, it's critical that you train your guys to keep all four wheels on the ground. When you lift a set of wheels off the ground, you're effectively reducing your traction by almost 50%. With the Arctic system, the best possible thing you can do is let the blade float and let the machine bite to the ground. If you're lifting your tires off the ground, you're effectively putting too much down pressure on it. You're not clearing the lot any better than if you kept all four tires on the ground and you're losing a lot of traction. So it's pretty important that you guys start to retrain your mind and don't power angle up and pop a wheelie like you're snow plowing and keep all four on the grounds all the time. Like all right, that. so let's pull these off yep. and let's get these hooked up on the equipment. So the big dog is gonna go on the compact loader and these other three, one, two, three, are going to go on the skids. How many skids we got? We got what, three skids? Frankie, th we got three skids without yeah. pushers, right? All right, that's what we're gonna do, so let's do it. Now another thing to be aware of is with a snow plow, they power angle, meaning you've gotta have power to them. With a snow pusher, you typically will have a universal hookup system, you slide into it, and you're on down the road. Now a lot of times with a snow plow, you've got to get those hookups just right. So that means that they're, not all hookups are universal. Some machines will have a different coupling system, bigger or little. Typically most of the equipment out there will have the same coupling system, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's 100%. So be aware of that. If you have one machine that's set up for the snow plow, it does not necessarily mean it will easily hook into the next machine because the coupling system may be a little bit different. to be lucky enough to be able to work both with a snow plow and a snow pusher they work really good hand in hand a snow plow is great at getting right up to the corners of curbs power angling away from that corner and moving the snow into the main lot area where then a snow pusher can come behind it grab all that snow and then half it right down to its final destination that's where having both is a perfect one-two combination helped you guys understand the subtle differences from a snow plow and a snow pusher and hopefully maybe helped you guys decide which one is right for you let me know in the comments down below which plow system you guys like to use and what you guys have learned along the way because you guys are a wealth of information and people coming into the video may still have a few questions and maybe you guys could help answer them and while you're here you guys do me a favor and check out these two videos right here god bless you guys Go get them. Stay safe out there.